We're here in Monterey, California at the Broad Arrow Auction. And they have about 155 cars here. More importantly, they have over 30 Porsches on site. And we're gonna walk around and show you our favorites. You ready to go? That's a lot of favorites here. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications by clicking on the bell icon and never miss a video. We've got lots of Porsche content coming your way. As much as I love driving the Porsche, I usually take the Mazda and I also review a lot of cars every year. Now, the Porsche has the Escort Redline Max 360C with the M2 Smart Dash Cam set up in it already. I don't like swapping it between cars because I have to realign that, that whole package. So fortunately, the sponsor of this video, Escort Radar, has sent us the Escort Max 4, which has become my go-to radar and laser detector for swapping in between cars. So it's easy as setting up your suction connector here, which is magnetic, it'll hold real well, and then attaching the power cord, just like on any other radar detector. And then after a second, it turns on. The M2 Smart Dash Cam can also be paired with the Max 4 radar detector. Caution, speed camera ahead. Protect your drive. Visit escortradar.com today. The GT1 is here in person. Yeah, this is like we're starting with dessert. The best for, usually the best is for last, but we're starting with the best for first. A GT1 race car. Uh, they didn't make many of these. Uh, they only made it for three years. This is the second year, the GT1 97. Um, they would win Le Mans in 98 because Porsche was supporting another team as well, a privateer that was running a whole different chassis that would win Le Mans in 96 and 97, which I'm sure the GT1 designers weren't thrilled with. But in 98, they would finally win Le Mans overall. Speaking of design, let's just point out some of the key features that are definitely design incredible. Look, who even makes a mirror like that anymore? Or the hood scoop. I mean, this car is like Easter eggs everywhere about design. Well, you got to love how the convex mirrors have been added to it. So it tells you that maybe it wasn't the most functional <laughs> uh, for racing. But this car here, before 98, so 98, they built actually a monocoque chassis kind of like the 962, 956 were. Prior to that, they were using the front end of a 993. 993. So yeah. inside the gauges and everything, it looks like a 993. The windshield off a of Speedster, 911 Speedster. They have the uh, hood scoop to send cool air to the intercoolers. Had a 3.2 flat, flat six in it. It was uh, very much almost like a street car, even though it looked like a full blown uh, prototype. This was running in a GT1 class. Today in supercars, you see carbon fiber all the time. It's almost common. But to see it in this vintage, in a race car, to me, that's ahead of its time. Yeah, I think this is one of Tony Hatter's greatest designs was the GT1. It's not only functional, but it's absolutely beautiful. Now, I don't know how we're gonna top this one, but we've got a lot more cars to show you. Now, unfortunately, this car is not for sale, but we're on the Motorlux side and they have some display cars and we had to give this car some love right off the bat, signal orange, but Manny, tell us a little bit about this one. Well, of course, I think everything's for sale for a price. <laughs> uh, but this is, if you're looking for a vintage Porsche, especially a long hood, a 911S, this is it. Look, orange badge, dri driving lights, fog lights, European lights. Look at the interior view, and I know you're an audio guy. Did you check out the rear speakers? Look at the period correct Craig speakers on the rear deck. Now, Manny, I know you think I gravitated towards this area because of the plane, but it's actually this car that brought me over here. Yeah, that plane's very interesting, that paint job, but <laughs> I also saw this car first before I saw the plane. Now this car never made it to the United States, yet here it is. Yeah, it's a 2010 997 Sport Classic, the point two. So they're nearing the end of the 997 run. They're getting ready for a 991. And almost as a farewell, Porsche Exclusive comes out with this car, which was just uh, blew everyone's mind. And it wasn't even more power. It was all cosmetics. Now this car is also the base for the PCA Classic Club Coupe. This is the car that we made the prequel of, so to speak. Yeah, including, uh, we took the wing, or the ducktail for the 60th Club Coupe, 
and the wheels because we liked it so much on this car. Uh, what we didn't get, but this plastic uh, club coupe got was this roof, which the was double bubble roof. something Porsche had never done for street cars before. Exactly. What an incredible car. So the phrase, if you know, you know, comes to mind when you're talking about this G-body car, because it's not just any G-body car. This is made for Group B rallying. And what, it, what Porsche loves is they rather their customers spend money on race cars than have the factory do it. So they built these for customers to go rally. And this example with only 3,000 miles on it, pretty much untouched. Yeah, the SCRS is a, a nomenclature that anyone in motorsports knows about. It was purely built for racing. And at 2.6 to $3 million, this one could be yours. All right, Manny, so here's your choice. You can go coupe, Targa, or cab. You can't choose, you gotta have all three. That's why they're all guards red, and they all have tan interiors, just buy all three of them. But they're not all M505. No, there was a 504 too, which is usually found in Europe, but according to this, if I'm reading correctly, it's a US car. And do you know what the uh, difference was? The telltale sign for a M504 car? And between a 505? No. One little option, well, it's on the front. It's the center oil cooler. You can see the bumper is a little bit different, but it has the center oil cooler. And personally, I like that look a little bit more than what normally came on the US versions. Uh, but look at these box rockers. You got the vents in the rear, which, as you know, what those vents are made out of. They're made of wood. Manny, of course, the icon is here. And it could be had. You could bid on it tomorrow. Yeah, so this is the last, I guess, of the normally aspirated, no hybrid supercar. Manual transmission. No, please save me's inside. No, it had the monocoque chassis. It was, uh, what was amazing about these cars when people discovered that the clutch jobs were monstrously expensive because they essentially had to split the car in half. Now this car seems to have got some miles on it, 20 some thousand miles, which in normal car world doesn't seem like a lot, but a supercar, yeah, this car has been used. It's good for 200,000 miles easy. Just keep the maintenance up. I'd do it. Manny, may I introduce you to Blueberry? That's the name of it. That's the name of it. So this is a 964 chassis. That's what Singer uses. It's been reimagined. Not only that, but look at it. They installed 993 wipers, which came, never came on a 964 like this. But the 964 was the last year of the traditional Targa top. So yes, it is a 964. What I liked was they recovered it in like the Cabriolet material, not the normal vinyl material that Porsche brought. Now this car is synonymous with the word bespoke because all the little details on this car is incredible. Yeah, Singer has become its own brand name. While they don't, they're not a vehicle manufacturer like Roof, uh, people refer to it simply as a Singer. And this car, price upon request. If you have to ask, maybe it's not for you. But you don't have to wait, which is like over a year, I think, now for Singers if you order it yourself, so you could have instant gratification. There you go. Now here's a tough one, Manny. We just saw that Carrera GT, 1.1, 1.2. This one, around 1.3, up to maybe 1.6. To me, I'd be picking this car. You know, I think I would get the Carrera GT simply because people would always be asking you, is it a real one? And this, in fact, is a real one. It's one of 36, the mighty 1996 911 GT2 that never made it to the United States. No, the only reason they built this car was so they could race the race version in GT2 class. That was really the only reason they needed to build this car. But unknowingly, they built an Icon because it's a rear wheel drive, essentially 993 turbo. But without the front wheel drive to kind of save you, it's pure brute, it's the Widowmaker. This car with its flares, with its speed lines, just the, the look of it all, I've always dreamt about this model. So the story about this car is gonna be in Panorama. Earlier today, we took a drive with one of the representatives from Broad Arrow, and during our drive, we come upon a brand new GT3 RS, 992 GT3 RS, which undoubtedly is probably the king of the road, until he saw us in the mirror, and when we passed him, the look in his face was just hilarious because his mouth was agape <laughs> at something that suddenly was a little bit better than what he was driving. Incredible car. Manny, we can't walk by this supercar. In fact, you've driven one of these before. 
Yeah, it's uh, well, it's it's a 918 Spider. It is a supercar. Uh, remember, it was just a million dollars at one point. Now they're asking, uh, expecting 2.7 million. Why didn't we pick up one? We would have doubled our money. I, I tried to tell my wife there was a bargain, uh, but these cars have. This car just got a recent major service at a bargain cost of fifteen thousand uh, dollars. So, you know, you got to be prepared for the. Uh, the, the price of entry, but I like in the very subtle colors, not a loud color. You can drive at the Walmart, or I guess I guess the 918 Spider owner would go to Target. Yes, uh, and it wouldn't stand out. Um, and you'd be doing, you know, the the environmental friendly thing because it's a hybrid. You can sneak home. I think it goes like five or seven miles on electric only. So you do the last seven miles electric only. No one knows you came home. Now, Manny, this is technically not a Porsche but I love it just the same. Yeah, I'm looking at the VIN number and it starts with, uh, so instead of WP0, it's WP, or excuse me, W09. And this is a roof, a 1998 Turbo R limited roof. Yeah, so if you want something very exclusive, you get a roof. Uh, it is a single manufacturer, it's not a Porsche. Uh, you buy it from a roof dealer, get a service at a roof dealer. 625 horsepower, manual transmission, body work to die for. Integrated roll cage. It's almost hand uh, made each one by Eloise Roof. All right, Manny, old school versus new school, both turbos. What you got over there? This is an 87 called the 930. It used a 3.3 liter, still a four speed, 6,600 miles. I put my head in it. Too bad you folks can't smell it because it smells brand new. It may smell brand new to you, but let me present to you this car with 379 miles, barely even broken in. Uh, it's got a 500-500 series. This is a 2011 911 GT2 RS. Now this baby's rare. Like I said before, why choose? Just get both of them. So Manny, on our recent podcast, PCA Insider, Nathan picked this car. It's kind of obvious why he picked it. Yeah, this is the 73 RS lightweight, but it had some interesting uh, modifications or additions rather from the factory front fender flares, which are normally found on the RSR. And look at that wing, that's not a ducktail. Come over here. An RS without a ducktail. So this is what would be on the uh, 930. Incredible. Manny, appropriately this car should be on stage, but my eyes can't stop from shifting because there's actually two more cars on the stage that we gotta talk about. But let's go with this one first. Once again, why choose? Just get all three of them. <laughs> the 959, come on. Uh, well, this is the first supercar Porsche builds. It's all wheel drive, twin turbo. Uh, it did so much for Porsche. Uh, unfortunately, they were losing money on every one they built. So it was a very limited production. They were almost glad to be uh, done building it, but it did lead the way to many innovations. And it was the start of the all wheel drive cars on Porsche. Absolutely. Next one here, the flake count on this paint, this roof pops in the sun. Somewhere I think the original owner of this car must have had a boat to match this because, <laughs> oh my God, they had got a, Flake was on sale with this paint. It is absolutely beautiful and it like sparkles in the sun. The RT. 12R by roof, stunning car. But the holy grail car, ladies and gentlemen, is the one on this end of the stage. Manny, this is one of your favorites. It's probably the most beautiful Porsche ever built, a 904 designed by uh, Ferdinand Alexander Porsche, otherwise known as Butsy Porsche. He would also design the 911. This one, he said it was his favorite because it was designed without committee, basically him himself designing it, an absolutely work of art. It's the beginning of Porsche getting into prototype racing. This was both a road car, but primarily a race car. So Manny, I know you say try to buy all three, but I'm guessing this would be your pick if you had to go home with one. Yes, it doesn't have air conditioning, but I think I can live with it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a car that uh, you see a lot of replicas of them, uh, but if you see one next to a replica, you see how just tiny this car is. And that's the way they made it. It was made for racing, fiberglass body. Literally three steps from the stage that you, could, you had to pull me away from, but I find a car that probably would cause me to win cars and coffee. So I know you're looking and thinking, this looks like a street 962, right? Yeah. But it really isn't. It uh, isn't. None of the body panels are interchangeable with the 962. 
Uh, so Koenig was racing 962s, but the 962 is never a street car. So Porsche never built it to be a street car, which means simple stuff like visibility, turn signals, so on and so forth, wasn't taken into account. So they, Koenig took a, the idea and built his own version of what would be a street car. So this so, C62 is inspired by the 962. Yes, inspired by, by the 962. At first glance, we thought it was a 962 also, uh, but in fact it's not. So if you have a 962, don't think you can start switching body panels with this one. What a sweet ride. Manny, I think I'm in love. <laughs> Look at this bent window, 356, 54. And today we talk about all sorts of colors, but back in the day, the rare color was black. And not a lot of people realize that because black is, they think, the easiest color to paint. But oh. what's really cool about these cars is the windshield is bent, not split. Right. Prior to this, they were split. They were two-piece windows, but this is now the bent, and it's still a pre-A. What a beautiful vehicle. And look at the stunning interior with the seats. The, the, the oh, I just, I can't say Think enough. Think about was, what else was on the road, especially in the United States in 1954. This must have looked like a spaceship coming down the road. Absolutely. And this is a 1600 motor that's been recently rebuilt by someone we know, that very familiar in the PCA world, Al Zim. Yeah, and it's been upgraded. Didn't come with the 1600. This should be fun to drive, rolling art. Manny, here's a stunning example of what a lot of people kind of call the middle child, the B. Yeah, at one time, these were the most affordable 356s, also one of the most popular in production-wise, uh, but now, I hate to say it, everything's pretty expensive. Now, this is a cabriolet, but it also has a hardtop. Yeah, and these hardtops were not made of fiberglass. They were made out of metal, so they were fairly uh, heavy. But this car in particular has a little over 9,000 original miles. This is the kind of 356 you want to buy. Original owner, single owner. Personally, I would take the hard top off and leave the top down the whole time and just go cruising when the weather's nice. What an incredible example. Manny, now this one, a lot of people will walk by just because they may not be a 928 fan. But I'm gonna tell you, this one is about $300,000 worth of 928. Yeah, the 928 fanatics love this car. Um, if you want something special that uh, the enthusiasts will really appreciate it, you know, you'll get that nod like, yes, we know what you have and it's something special. It's the 928 Club Sport. And speaking of special, it's one of seven. This was an expensive car to get, expensive option, so not a lot of people checked off that they wanted this particular option to make it a club sport. But you did get no sunroof, you got sound elite, um, lighter weight, made the car a little lighter weight. The car was a heavy car back then, uh, but this made it a little bit sportier. Magnesium wheels, which alone I think are very cool. So to make the price tag seem more palatable, a lot of 928s, you know, maintenance is deferred, People let them kind of leave them to be. This one has recently about $65,000 worth of maintenance done to it. Yeah, and more than likely, if you find a club sport, it's been owned by an enthusiast and I'm sure they've kept the maintenance up uh, and not let it languish uh, into the, the term maintenance nightmare it can be. And this might be a surprise. Of all the cars that we've seen here at the Broad Arrow Auction and over at Motor Lux, this 928 has to be at the top of the list of in terms of being special. Yeah, we may see a record being set for this particular car. Mm -hmm.